thank you because your presence is here in our midst father we appreciate you jesus we exalt your name we magnify your name thank you for all the miracles and all the signs and wonders and all the testimonies father we return all the glory to you you are the doer of all these marvelous mighty works there is no deputy doer take all the glory and all the praise jesus the hour has come send your word again with power send your word again with anointing lord reach to everyone under the sound of my voice this morning this service is called covenant day of fruitfulness jesus confirm your word in this service lord hide me behind the cross of calvary no man will see me nor hear me but everyone will see you and hear you and every life will be transformed today everyone will return with miracle thank you mighty father in jesus precious name we have given thanks amen give the lord a big big hand of praise this morning and you may please be seated if you are not already done so i welcome you in the name of the lord jesus christ to this virtual service being transmitted from the sanctuary of winners chapel international new york we are located 310 14 avenue m state I welcome you from, from wherever you are connected this morning. I trust God. Today is your day of miracle. In the name of Jesus Christ. Our focus for the month is financial fortune is my heritage in Christ. This commission, we have 12 pillars that we run with every year. So prosperity is one of the pillars. The pillars include faith, includes the word, includes holiness includes praise includes the supernatural and much more and one of the 12 pillars is prosperity and that is what god is saying for you and i this month why prosperity because the world has suffered a lot especially from the pandemic now god is saying i'm going to restore my original agenda of prosperity after this old pandemic is over praise the lord and that is why god is revealing to his servant so that we get set for what god is about to do in our midst and through you just like we had in the amazing testimonies this morning god is still at work he's still at work in your life and he will do something in your life this morning in the name of jesus christ this service is specifically targeting fruitfulness fruitfulness all round fruitfulness especially the fruit of the womb if you are blessed with children you don't know what those who are believing god are going through and oftentimes we are tempted to think of oh, fruitfulness i don't think that is really needed i don't think a lot of people really need that because so many people have children and they have more than enough but there are still lots of people that are crying day and night believing god for miracle children and that is why god has orchestrated this service to reach out to such individuals believing god for the miracle of the fruit of the womb and just like we saw it vividly in the audio visual testimonies this morning i pray in the name of jesus as an aftermath of this service everyone under the sound of my voice or connected or related or associated with anyone under the sound of my voice this morning believing god for the fruit of the womb you are returning with your miracle after this service in the name of jesus christ you can also stand in for your children even if they are still young right now one day they will still give birth if jesus starts so you can you can stand in for your children you can stand in for your grandchildren you can stand in for your friends you can stand in for your family so everyone needs this service this morning and you are going over with your package however if all of those don't even bother you then you can also engage your heart for the fruitfulness in the work of your hand fruitfulness in your career fruitfulness in your mind fruitfulness in your business fruitfulness in your health when your health is fruitful that's when you live in sound health and i trust god this morning everyone will receive a touch of god in jesus mighty name much more this is also a communion service a special communion service so as we also partake of the body and the blood of jesus this morning a seal of fruitfulness will be placed upon each one of us in the name of jesus christ but before we go into all of this let's open up our topic for today which we started last week 
gateways to financial fortune. And we are in part two. Gateways to financial fortunes. Part two. It's very important for us to know that financial fortune in the kingdom is the covenant. Is the covenant. It's not something you can pray to enter into without taking responsibility. It's not something you can fast into without taking responsibility. It's not even something someone can pray for you. Someone can teach you. Someone can guide you into what you need to do, but cannot really impact you to prosper except you take responsibilities. That's why it's a covenant. And what is a covenant? The covenant is an agreement within, uh, between two or more people that is bound with an oath. That's a covenant. And covenant is God's bailout platform. God's bailout platform from harsh economic situations. So God uses the covenant to bail his children out of harsh economic situations. Why? We are only empowered for wealth through covenant practice. In Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18, as we laid the foundation last week, the word of the Lord says, and you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers, as it is this day. So it's a covenant. And we saw this covenant when Noah offered a sacrifice in Genesis chapter 8 verse 22. Genesis chapter 8 verse 22. Why the earth remains seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer and day and night shall not cease as the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest. That's the covenant. Your seed is what guarantees your harvest. Just like now, we are in summer. Everywhere is hot now. The AC in my house is almost 24-7 on. Because the weather is so humid and so hot. And very soon now, in fact, when I look at my jacket, I say, you are an holiday now. <laughs> you are an holiday enjoy. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> and that is one thing I can never do with that before. It was like I, am, I was too used to it. Just put it on. I mean, but now the jacket is free to do his own. It's, it's, it's only someone who is, I don't know how to put it now, will be putting on jacket at this time. <laughs> All jacket suspended. Why? Because that is not the season. So as, so as long as we see all of this, we should also know that seed time will always guarantee at this time. Now, why God blesses or why does God bless? We must understand that the anchor purpose of wealth in the kingdom is for the advancement of the kingdom of God. The primary purpose, the anchor purpose of wealth in the kingdom is for the advancement of God's kingdom. So God blesses primarily to be a blessing first to the kingdom and then to the world around us. The primary reason of God's blessing us, committing his wealth. Because the man of God said, if the purpose of a thing is not known, abuse is inevitable. So, if we know the primary purpose of God's wealth, then we'll be able to use it rightly. The purpose of God's wealth is not even for you first. It's for the advancement of his kingdom. Then, for the world. Of course, you know, if you are the custodian of the wealth, your own is natural. So it's not that, oh, this is, this is for me. No, your own is just natural because you are the carrier. Just like the pipe that carries water never run dry. So the same way is applicable to you. So see yourself as an agent. See yourself as a representative of God in disbursing God's wealth. In Matthew chapter 24 verse 14, Matthew chapter 24 and verse 14, the Bible says, And this gospel of a kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. And then the end will come. So how do you think the gospel is being preached? He said, through prosperity, my kingdom will spread across. Zechariah chapter 1 verse 21. So the purpose, the primary purpose of God's wealth is for the advancement of a kingdom of God. And if you read through Haggai chapter 2, verse 3 to 9, 
you will see how God was angry with these people because what he committed to their hand was not properly utilized for his kingdom. So the primary purpose is to advance the kingdom and follow that is to affect the world around us. Just like God promised Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, after he had blessed him, in verse 3 precisely said, I will bless those who bless you and I will curse those him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. That will be somebody in the name of Jesus Christ. So be, in this wise, God will not bless anyone in the kingdom beyond his commitment to the promotion of the kingdom on the earth. So if your heart is not panting after the promotion of the kingdom, God cannot bless you the way he would have blessed you. Because the primary purpose of his, health, of his wealth is to advance the kingdom. Look at 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 17 to 18. Solomon speaking concerning his father. Now it was in the heart of my father David to build a temple for the name of the Lord God of Israel. But the Lord said to my father David, Whereas it was in your heart to build a temple for my name, you did well that it was in your heart. So you will always do well if you have the intention to use the wealth, your wealth, God's giving wealth, to advance the kingdom of God. Now, number two, it's also important for us to know that God will not bless anyone beyond his commitment to giving towards the well-being of mankind. We already said the kingdom is crucial. The next one is also the well-being of mankind. We have all the opportunities to also reach out to others. In Proverbs chapter 28, verse 17, or verse 27, Proverbs 28, verse 27, the Bible says, He who gives to the poor will not lack. But he who hides his eyes will have many curses. Say, God forbid. So, the secondary purpose, or another primary purpose of God's wealth in our hands, is to reach out to the world for the well-being of mankind. And you can start from your level. There are individuals today that are sponsoring a lot of people on scholarship, community on scholarship, community projects, uh, run uh, homeless home and uh, orphanage homes and all of those things to affect mankind. You may be looking at that and say, well, since I don't have that kind of money, I don't think I can do it. But you can start with just one meal given to one hungry person. Praise the Lord. Just one meal. You don't have to start from the top. You start from where you are. God told Abraham, he said, from the place where thou art. Today, you, you can feed one person. Tomorrow, you'll be feeding five. Next, tomorrow, you'll be feeding ten. And so on and so forth. Now, you can just pay per payment of a, a tuition of somebody today. Tomorrow, you're going to be sponsoring many on scholarships. So, the purpose of God's wealth is for the well-being of mankind. In Proverbs chapter 11, verse 24 to 25. The Bible says there is one who scatters, yet increases more. And there is one who withholds more than his right, but leads to poverty. The generous soul will be made rich, and he who waters will also be watered himself. Now look at that. You scatter, you increase. You withhold more than is necessary, then you become poor. Now, that tells me that part of the blessing is also for you to enjoy so, there is a part you also save. There is a part you invest. There is a part you keep. But it should not be more than necessary. You should understand that you don't just keep it for yourself. There is a purpose God commits that wealth. And God knows your size. Praise the Lord. So, you can't hide it from God. You can hide it from every, anyone. You can hide it even from your wife. There are husbands who hide their finances from their wives. And there are wives too who also do the same. So you can, you can be sleeping on the same bed, you can be going everywhere, and you are still hiding. <laughs> Some people are saying, Pastor, please don't go to that area this morning. Just talk about something else. <laughs> I can feel you from your house. <laughs> okay, let me suspend that one. <laughs> Praise God. So what I'm saying is, the purpose of that wealth 
is for you to extend it to mankind. We saw it in Job. We saw how Job, that was the secret of Job. If you read Job chapter 29, verse 4 to 17, you will see how Job expressed his secret. How what he was doing, eyes to the blind, and to the lame, father to the fatherless, husband of the widows. He's not saying, oh, he's going to marry the widow. No, 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 no. He said he's taking responsibility that the husband of the widow would have done. Giving, maybe helping the widow to pay the house rent, helping the widow to sponsor the children to school. And then, boom, God blessed him. God opened up his windows, the windows of heaven over him. I pray your testimony shall be the next one in the name of Jesus Christ. However, giving must be done with discretion. That is, that is according to covenant giving priorities. It has to be done with discretion. In Psalm 112 verse 5, the Bible says, a good man deals graciously and lends and lends. He will guide his affairs with discretion. So it has to be done with discretion. Uh, the first thing uh, God is asking from us is his kingdom, then the humanity. You can't say, oh, all I'm doing is just taking care of humanity when the kingdom is suffering. It has to be done with discretion. Now, what is the primary purpose of God's wealth is tithing, just like we had last week. The, and this is the covenant requirement for working in financial fortune. Tithing and kingdom advancement sacrifices. This is very important. I thought on this on Sunday and on Wednesday. We also went a little bit further teaching on this. And all throughout the month we are going to be teaching on this. The reason is that is the way to secure the blessing. You may get everything. The richest man today, uh, well, we are not saying this will happen to him, but someone can be the richest man today and tomorrow falls. Why? Because the wealth is not secured. Because any little mistake, any little error can squander the whole wealth. We have seen in this country where lawsuits granted many companies. And the companies went into back bankruptcy. Why? Because those are devourers. So you can have anything you want to have. But if you are not a titan, you open it up to danger. It's just like somebody driving out a brand new car from dealership with no insurance. It's a risk. It's a, in fact, they will not allow you to drive it out. Except if you are paid, you know, everything up front. And they warn you, you have to put insurance. I said, no, that's my, that's my own car. I have to. That's even if they have to allow you. But if you take that car out without insurance, it's like you have no car. Because someone who has no insurance can run into you and the whole thing becomes wreck. Who do you turn to? So it's the same way. When you, have, when you are blessed and you are not paying your tithe, you open it up to devour us. Somebody said everybody pays tithe. It's either you pay it rightly to God or the devil come and take it forcefully. I've had testimonies of people who will not pay tithe the same week, their cars will just break down. It's not, God is not the one doing it. Don't miss. A lot of time we think, oh, God is the one that will punish. No. All God will do, God will just leave you. You don't have defense. Now, it's, not, it's just like you have a security guide that should be guiding you and you tell the security guide to just stay. I don't want you to follow me. Now, something happened on the way. Is it the security guy that causes it? No. It's not him. So, it's not God. But all, all that happens is you leave God outside of your life. So, when you don't pay your tithe, then God hands off. Then you open up opportunity for the enemy. So, the enemy will now take advantage of that. That's how it happens. But that shall not be you in the name of Jesus Christ. That's why the Bible says in Malachi chapter 3, verse 6 to 10, it says, For I am the Lord, I do not change. Therefore, you are not consumed, O sons of Jacob. Yet from the days of your fathers, you have gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them. It says, Return to me and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. But you said, In what way shall we return? Do not rob God. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, in what way have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse. For you have robbed me, even this old nation. 
Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessings that there will not be room enough to receive it. And I will also rebuke the devourers for your sake. If you go to the next verse, praise the Lord. So tithe opens us up to overflow, overflow of the blessings of God. And it rebukes the devourer. Don't let anybody deceive you. By the grace of God, we've been privileged to be in this, even when we did not even understand the blessing in tithe. I grew up in church, so I grew up to know that you bring the 10%, but I didn't know all of the benefits. In our Orthodox church, then, we have a special envelope, you put it. It's called the duplex envelope. So anything that comes your way, your pocket money, little, little stipend you have there, we were already aware that we have to put it. So it's not any struggle. Praise God. And some of us in this part of the world, the same way is not a struggle for your taxes when your taxes are deducted. In fact, it is auto. You don't, that one, you don't consider it as part of your money. You just receive your pay slip. You are not fighting. Ah, what is FICA? What is uh, Medicaid? What is all of this nonsense? What is this? No, no, no. You just know that this is just normal to be taken. So the same way. But God is giving you the responsibility to be the one to come and commit it to him. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Now, so that is very critical. Tithing. If you have not been paying your tithe, you are denying yourself a great benefit from God. And God is saying, return to me and I will return to you. Praise God. Then number two, apart from tithing, another covenant uh, requirement for working in financial fortune is giving to ministries and ministers of the gospel. Giving to ministries and ministers of the gospel. Now, we seldom teach on this, especially giving to ministers of the gospel. I mean, if you have observed all our teaching, this is one area that we don't teach on. But the covenant people understand that this is a requirement. Now, giving to the ministry is very important because ministry is the, the work of God. Any ministry that is advancing the kingdom, we are also authorized by the Lord to give to support that cause, to give to advance that cause. And also the ministers, most times we, come, we, we, we cannot demarcate between the minister and the ministry. But thank God for this commission. We have had our father said over times, that this commission is different from him. This was one of the things I heard from him long time ago that made me settled in this commission. I heard him talk about somebody gave a check of one million uh, naira to him. I mean, one million naira to the ministry. Yes, back. this is not now. Even one million naira now is still a huge sum. But then, as far back as 1996, and the person wrote his name on the check, and send it to the church. And so when the admin officer received the check, he brought it to him that, sir, this is, this is for you. So he read the letter that came with the check and the letter said, for the work of the ministry. So he gave it back to the admin officer. He said, post it for the church. He said, sir, but that is your name there. He said, did you read the letter? He said, yes, I read the letter, but it's your name. He said, no, it's for the work of the ministry. I am not the work of the ministry. I am a worker in the ministry. He still reiterated it this morning. But I had this long time ago. And that was what glued me to him. That what? A man can be so transparent like this. This is the kind of man to follow. And by the grace of God, that is what we have learned. I mean, in some of the churches I pastored, people will bring cash. Before we come to church, drop it in the mailbox. And put right for the church. Offering. For the church if you don't understand the ministry and what belongs to you you may think that is opportunity and a lot of people have destroyed their destinies taking what does not belong to them so this is one area i guide very jealously what belongs to the pastor is different from what belongs to the church the church is the church the pastor is the pastor if it is not prophet offering for the pastor 
Everything goes to the church, even if it has no name. Praise the Lord. So what we are saying this morning is that that is also one way to, to, to be part of what God is doing in the ministry. Most times a lot of people remember the ministry, but they don't remember the minister. All they think is, oh, since he's also the, he's also the one doing the ministry. They, I mean, he will, no, 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 no. The minister is different from the ministry. Just this week, God just laid it. I have not even studied this when God laid it in my heart. There's a particular ministry that I, by the grace of God, I was able to send something to. And I sent something, I said, this one for the ministry, this one for you, do, pastor, doing the ministry. Because I understand what it means. That a faithful man of God will not take what belongs to the ministry, even if he's the chief executive officer in quotes of that ministry. Shout hallelujah. And in Matthew chapter 10, verse 41, the Bible says, He who receives the prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he who receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. Praise the Lord. Now, on this covenant day of fruitfulness, I decree in the name of Jesus Christ for all your kingdom commitment. I mean, every time that I just see the way the members of this church are, are too committed, too faithful to advance the kingdom, I'm just, I'm just, my heart just prays for you. Even in this pandemic, in this lockdown, our finances did not go down. Rather, it was going up. That is because people are so committed to advancing the kingdom. And I decree in the name of Jesus Christ on this covenant day of fruitful, the work of your hand will be, fruit, will, fruit, will be fruitful. I decree your business shall experience fruitfulness. I decree in the name of Jesus, your vocation shall experience fruitfulness. Everything concerning you shall experience fruitfulness in the name of Jesus Christ. Keys to supernatural fruitfulness. Number one, we must understand that as seeds of Abraham, we are redeemed to be fruitful. As seed of Abraham, we are redeemed to be fruitful. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 14. He said, you shall be blessed above all people. There shall not be a male or female barren among you or among your livestock. So God is even extending it to your livestock. If God will do it for your livestock, how much more you, you're so precious. And number two, we have been redeemed from the curse of barrenness. Barrenness is a curse. It's not a blessing. But by redemption, we are already delivered from that curse of barrenness. Please pay attention to me for especially everyone believing God for the fruit of the womb. And this is also applicable to all areas. Now, in Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 18... The Bible says, cursed shall be the fruit of your body. Can you see? That's part of the curse of the law. Cursed shall be the fruit of your body and the produce of your land. Look at that. So, which means fruitfulness we are talking about now is not just part the body alone, but also the land, the increase of your cattle, that's your business, and the offspring of your flocks, that's your investment. You can also be stagnated in your investment. Praise the Lord. Now, I, I, I have... Uh, a little investment, they sent a letter to me this week, and I look at it, even in the midst of, midst of pandemic, it's increased. I said, why not? I'm serving God. Others may be going down, my own is not permitted to go down. Shout hallelujah. And I prophesied, I said, you, you will never decrease, so <laughs> you can never go down. No matter what, you will always be going up. And that shall also be for you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Why? Because we are redeemed from the curse of the law. Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 to 14. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come again to the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of a spirit through faith. And in verse 29, it says, And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed, and he is according to the promise. So someone might be saying, oh, but that was for Abraham. But you are connected to Abraham by being born again in Christ Jesus. Therefore, I decree in the name of Jesus. Every curse of barrenness over your life is shattered today in the name of Jesus. So understand, as seed of Abraham, we are redeemed to be fruitful. Number two, we have been redeemed from the curse of, of barrenness. And number three, 
Serving God empowers the redeemed for fruitfulness. Now, when you know that you are redeemed to be fruitful and you now continue to serve God, then you are empowered to be fruitful. The key scripture here is Exodus 23, 25 to 26. Ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. There shall nothing cast their young nor be barren in thy land. Look at that. The number of thy days I will fulfill. So when you serve God, you are empowered to be fruitful. Serving God empowers the redeemed for fruitfulness. So keep on serving him. And I decree in the name of Jesus as you continue to serve him, you shall be fruitful. The work of your hands shall be fruitful. Your businesses shall be fruitful. Your body shall be fruitful. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Psalm 127 verse 3, the Bible says, Behold, children are a heritage of the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. So part of the reward of your kingdom service is fruitfulness. I stand there to decree everyone serving God, especially in the area of the fruit of the womb. I decree if I be a man of God, between now, from nine months from here, we'll be celebrating your miracle children. It will interest you to know that even in this pandemic, we have dedicated several miracle children. Several miracle children. So which means the Lord our God is mighty. He's doing amazing wonders. Amazing wonders. We had a wedding last month. This month, by the grace of God, another wedding is coming up. Praise the Lord. So this God is real. He's working wonders. And I decree the name of Jesus, your own miracle shall be the next one. As long as we are planted in the house of God, that's number four. We must be planted in the house of God. And as long as we are planted in the house of God, we continue to bear fruits. Even until old age, we continue to bear fruits. So I decree in the name of Jesus Christ, until old age, your businesses will be growing. Until old age, your mind shall be fruitful. In Psalm 92, verse 12 to 15, he said, The righteous flourish like a palm tree. It shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age. But remember, it is those who are planted. So, coming to church today and leaving the church tomorrow is anti-fruitfulness you have to be planted he said they will take root downward and bear fruit upward be planted but somebody is saying but there's no church right now no there's church all the activities are still going on even though virtually by teleconference you you can go on, 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 on outside and reach out with the gospel reaching out with the souls you can be on the prayer altar and praying for souls, praying for new converts. So you can get committed. You can still be planted, even in the midst of the lockdown. And I decree in the name of Jesus for everyone who is planted, you will continue to bear fruit even to old age. Even in old age, your mind shall be fruitful in the name of Jesus Christ. And number five, keys to fruitfulness is joy and rejoicing. Joy and rejoicing. This is a spiritual requirement for fruitfulness. If you look at the story of Hannah in First Samuel chapter 1, verse 13 to 19, after he met with the prophet Eli, it was when her countenance was no more sad. That was when Samuel came. Many of us have killed our fruitfulness by sorrow of the heart, by depression, by the report of the medical practitioners. And all of the negative things that can kill our joy. Never allow your joy to be killed. Never allow your joy to be killed. The Bible says the harvest of the field will perish when joy is missing. Joel chapter 1 verse 10 to 11. I've said this before. There are some emails I don't read on Sunday morning. There are some phone calls I don't pick on Sunday morning. There are some text messages I don't read on Sunday morning. Somebody said, but pastor, why did you even have to read anything on Sunday morning? Because we are a commission that receives information per seconds per seconds. So I have to check whether there is an update 
on WhatsApp or email or whatever. But while checking, you see some emails from some individuals or text messages or whatever, you just leave that till after service. Because you know what you are going to get from it can poke your joy. Unless you come to the altar getting angry. So there are some emails you don't read. You know, you don't even call phone calls. You don't want to call when you don't want your joy to be affected. Praise the Lord. So it takes joy and rejoicing. Joy and rejoicing. Look at Ab Abraham in Romans chapter 4, verse 17 to 20. He said, it is written, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him who believed. God who gives life to the dead and calls those things who be not as though they were, who contrary to hope in all belief, so that he became the father of many nations according to what was spoken. So shall your descendants be, and not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead, since he was about a hundred years old, and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. So that was how Abraham got there. Now in medical sciences, they talk about menopause. So Sarah reached menopause. If you want to say that for the men too, you can say Papa Pos. So Abraham already in Papa Pos, Sarah already in menopause, and now Isaac came forth. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. And numerously I said, if something is paused, you can play it again. Thank God it's not stop. It's not menopause stop or Papa stop. <laughs> it is paused. So if it is paused at any time, maybe you are here, you are listening to something on YouTube, and a phone call, because you just pause it. And after the phone call, you play again. Praise the Lord. So if the doctor tells you you have reached menopause, just go and menopause play. Shout hallelujah. And I decree in the name of Jesus Christ, with joy in your heart, your own Samuel shall be delivered. In the name of Jesus Christ. And finally, understand that your father is the baby maker. And you cannot be a baby beggar. Of course, you know what I'm going to say next. If your father has a bakery, <laughs> You can never beg for bread. If your father has a bakery. Now, even if it's not your father, if your uncle like me has a bakery. Years back, I had, I have two uncles who had bakeries. We never lack bread. Anytime we want to take fresh bread. In fact, we don't eat yesterday bread. Praise God. Yesterday bread is uh, somehow not very delicious. Fresh bread from Hoven. That was my uncle. Now imagine if that was my father. It would be bread in the morning, bread in the evening. <laughs> and that's who God is. God is the baby maker. That is why I know your begging is over today. That is how I know your crying is over today. In Psalm 100 and verse number 3, he said, Know that the Lord is God. It is he who has made us. And not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. And in Psalm 139 verse 14. He said, I will praise you. I, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works. And that my soul knows very well. And in Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. He said, before I formed you in the womb. I knew you. So children are not a product of sperm and egg. Praise God. They are the makings of God. That is why I know no doctor's report is enough to stop you from being fruitful. We have had testimony of people without womb. That one medically is impossible because where will the baby grow? We have had people of testimony of low sperm count, no sperm count at all, everything sealed, and yet miracle baby came. Don't you think because, oh, you're already 40, you're already 45, you're already 50. We have a testimony of 53, 60, giving birth. These are miracles. Although you may say, well, it's not normal. Yes, it's not normal, but God special, specializes in abnormalities. He said, with God, nothing shall be impossible. With men, yes, it is impossible, but not with God. With God, nothing shall be impossible. I therefore decree in the name of Jesus, today is your day of miracle. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone on the line for miracle children. Expect to return from this prophetic service. In the name of Jesus Christ with your miracle children. Amen. And I know you have your point of contact. You have one, you will receive one. You need, I mean, you need one, you will receive one. You need two, you receive two. You need three, you receive three. 
you need quadruple, you receive quadruple in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Say with me, for with God, nothing shall be possible. And the same is applicable to the work of your hand. The same is applicable to your businesses. Last week, we dealt about that. Somebody already returned with that testimony. I decree the name of Jesus as an aftermath of this service this morning. You are returning with your testimonies. Please rise with me this morning. Get excited and give the Lord a big, big, big shout of praise. And lift up your voice and begin to appreciate the Lord. Give him praise and give him glory. Celebrate him. Magnify him. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be glorified. Appreciate him. Celebrate him. Give him glory. Give him praise. Jesus, we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. Please take your seat. We are still going to pray. I'm going to pray over your point of contact this morning. But before then, if there's anyone under the sound of my voice, you have not received Jesus Christ as your Savior, as your Lord. Now, I'm not saying you've not been going to church or you've not been connecting online. But personally, you have not asked Jesus to come into your life as your savior you are missing a lot what that means is you are not redeemed and so you don't you are not qualified for everything we are saying but you can give your heart to the lord this morning and everything will become yours every head bow and every eye closed you are under the sound of my voice you have not given your life to jesus or you gave your life to him and you took it back again what that means is you backslided you turned back and now you want to return back to him please say this prayer with me say lord jesus I come to you today I know I have sinned and fallen short of your glory forgive me all of my sins wash me with your precious blood that you shed on the cross of Calvary come into my life I make you my Savior and my Lord I rededicate my life to you I will serve you and follow you all the days of my life in Jesus name amen if you said the prayer please fill your information on our website so that we can continue to pray for you. We pray for all our, our new our saved souls and everyone connected to us. So you will do yourself a great favor by filling your information so that we can keep praying for you and also connect to you. And also to everyone joining us for the very first time this morning, we really appreciate you. Also fill your information so that we can connect to you and we can send all of our resources to you and take advantage of what we have for you in Jesus' mighty name. Please, let's rise up again.